philanthropist now. You're a gangster. I need 500 cases of rum. Rosetti is trouble for everyone. It's an ambush! Stop! Stir the eggnog, raise the toddy. Happy New Year, everybody! <laughs> Season three begins 14 months into the future, uh, starting on New Year's Eve 1922 into 1923. Nucky is still involved in politics and is still a very prominent person in Atlantic City, and the idea of being a successful married philanthropist certainly helps with that aspect of his business. It also takes suspicion off of his gangster activities. When uh, the guests are leaving and Margaret and Nucky are alone, they drop the masks. It's really clear that they're really just together for appearances sake only. Happy New Year. Billy Kent is a showgirl who performs uh, with Eddie Cantor at the New Year's Eve party. Nucky goes back to his suite, and there she is in his bed, and it becomes clear that they've been having an ongoing affair. I've never had so much fun pretending I didn't know someone. One of the things that we had discussed uh, very often on the show is Nucky's transformation from, you know, sort of a low-level gangster into becoming fully a gangster. And certainly when we pick him up in season three, there's no doubt that he is that guy. I thought you were letting him go. Why would you think that? I got some three and one in the glove box. I don't know what that is. It's oil, what else? What else could it be? Here. Jim Rossetti is a New York gangster, uh, incredible hothead. Uh, he's best described by Nucky as the type of person who can find an insult in a bouquet of roses. Who the fuck is Nucky Thompson to wish me good luck? Earlier in the episode, Nucky meets with Harry Doherty, the attorney general. You run an open air bazaar, alcohol to the highest bidder. In a way of trying to keep the spotlight off of himself, he's trying to tell Nucky to stay out of trouble too. So Nucky makes the decision that in order to keep himself out of the paper, the simplest way to do that is to do business with one person only. Effective immediately, I'll be exporting exclusively to Mr. Rothstein. Of course, turns out to be a decision that causes a lot more trouble. I'm making a goodwill gesture. How about I make one too? We pick up Richard Harrow in season three. He's working as a caretaker uh, for Gillian Darmody. He's uh, living in the Artemis Club, which of course now has been transformed into a very high class whorehouse. But being close to Jimmy, Richard is staying close now to Jimmy's family, not just Gillian, but more importantly, Tommy. I'd appreciate if you'd stop filling Tommy's head with stories about the past. Van Alden is basically going door to door, knocking, trying to sell irons. One of the places he walks into is Dean O'Banion's flower shop. O'Banion was a gangster in Chicago who was Capone's main rival in the early 20s. Capone is there threatening O'Banion. Hey, oh, dummy! Where the fuck you been? Thank you. Shut your yap and look smart. And Van Alden inadvertently saves Dean O'Banion's life. What were you saying? Eli, who's just getting out of prison, finds out that uh, his new job is going to be working for Mickey Doyle. Eli is very much discontented, and he tries to talk to Nucky and tells him he's paid his dues, he's gone to jail, and he wants more responsibility. Allowing you to simply go to jail is the last gift I'll ever give you. Chip Rossetti hasn't made it back to New York. He's stopped for the night at the halfway mark in a little town on the coast called Tabor Heights. He's starting to get the idea that Tabor Heights is a place that he can take over pretty easily. And by the end, of course, he and his men blockade Nucky's shipment to New York City, turning it around in a really uh, colorful display by Jip. We'll gas up, we'll pay you, and we'll drive on. I got a gun. He got a gun. He got a gun. Everybody got guns! At this point, we know Jip's not leaving Tabor Heights, and the war is on. Owen has now elevated himself to right-hand man status for Nucky, sort of functioning as a bodyguard, also uh, a manager of the whole liquor operation. Nucky now realizes through Eli's insights into Jip Rossetti that Jip has to go. A plot is hatched where Benny Siegel, who's very young at this point, poses as a newsboy, of course, fails in killing Jip Rossetti. It actually has ramifications that go all the way up the line to Joe Mazzaria. You make a war in New Jersey, but you can't hold on to 20 blocks here. Mazzaria was the guy who controlled everything uh, on the Lower East Side, certainly in terms of the Italian-American organized crime figures. Now, this is such a good deal. Well, you know what the other Joe? Mr. Rothstein has reservations about entering the heroin trade. This is a raid! Van Alden has been stalked by the prohibition agent who arrested him. As it turns out, the guy recognizes him because they both live in the same neighborhood. 
He comes home from work one night and finds the prohibition agent sitting in his apartment talking to Sigrid. It becomes clear that the guy is really going to put the bite on Van Alden for something. And before he can say exactly what it is, Sigurd attacks him with a mallet. They kill him. What they realized was the guy was just there to return an iron that Van Alden had sold him. I must dispose of a body. He goes to Albanian for help in disposing this body. And now Van Alden is beholden to one of the biggest gangsters in Chicago. What are you looking at, Half Moon? Harrow has been spending time at the local American Legion Hall. One of the other veterans there is an older man named Paul Sigorski. <laughs> Having been beaten up by one of the other veterans, uh, Harrow is waiting with Sigorski, and his daughter Julia comes to pick him up, and the two of them begin a friendship. How would you judge a man you could buy within five minutes of meeting him? Gaston Means uh, was a very colorful character who reported directly to Harry Doherty. Doherty tells uh, Nucky that instead of Jess Smith now collecting the payoff money every week, he's going to meet his man, Gaston Means. Nucky shows up to deliver his payoff money, and Gaston Means isn't there. The witch hunt. If you bring me down, you're coming with me. Before Nucky can leave town, he's arrested at the train station in Washington at Doherty's behest. And the prosecutor in night court is Esther Randolph. Nucky offers her George Remus as bait. He's the biggest bootlegger in the country, and I can give you his entire operation. And then the two of them can work together to bring their common enemy, Harry Doherty, down. I don't think it's wise. We both know how to keep a secret. With Nucky out of town, Owen is, of course, enlisted to look after Margaret and the house. Uh, Margaret and Owen find themselves alone. Of course, the fact that they're alone sort of caused them to rekindle their romance. I want two cases a week. Because Van Alden is beholden to O'Banion and needs to make a little extra money for himself, he's now allowed Van Alden to install a still in their kitchen. Akvit. We're not supposed to drink any. Not to drink, to sell. Once Van Alden starts selling Akavit and making extra money, he wanders into a territory that, unbeknownst to him, is controlled by Al Capone. Tell me everything you know about Albanian's operation. Jillian is trying to take a loan on the business, but unless Jimmy is declared dead, she can't really move forward and she has a guest that she picked up on the boardwalk. Roger bears a really striking resemblance to Jimmy, and in her seduction of this kid, ultimately leads to them being in the bathroom where she injects him with heroin and drowns him just to provide her with a body that she could claim as her son's. The death notices. Nucky reads about Jimmy's death in the newspaper and, of course, knows better because Nucky was responsible. So he shows up at the Artemis Club. Jillian, of course, is furious. And that leads her to start formulating a plan of how can I get rid of Nucky? How can I start to plant the seeds somewhere else uh, that might result in Nucky's death? Are you familiar with Babette's? He'll be dining there this evening. I thought perhaps you'd like to surprise him. Jillian, knowing that with this information, Jip Rossetti can use it to kill Nucky. Mr. Thompson! As they're walking down the boardwalk, Nucky is waylaid by Baxter. Go ahead. No reason for both of us to suffer. Baxter chats him up. Billy Kent goes on ahead. Just as Nucky is starting to intuit that something is very wrong, <laughs> the explosion happens, and Billy Kent is incinerated, and the boardwalk is the site of a massive explosion. In plotting his retaliation against Jip, Nucky enlists Eli to put together a meeting of all the New York gangsters. Joe Massarea is backing Jip Rossetti. I need your help. Business with you is more trouble than it's worth. Owen is rapidly losing confidence in the ability to pull this war off and I think starts to realize that they need to come up with a different plan. I just saw this as a bigger operation. This job doesn't call for an army, just patience. Unfortunately, Owen returns home at the end of the episode in a crate. Margaret, don't! <laughs> it's at this moment that Nucky realizes Margaret is in love with this man. Did you know? I tend only to you. Margaret and the children have left at Nucky's behest. He and Eddie are pulled up alone at the Ritz with Nucky's various bodyguards. The elevator door is open, and in fact, Joe Masri's men, Jip Rossetti's men, are there. Eddie Kessler has been wounded. Having nowhere else to go, Nucky drives to the north side and goes to Chalky. Earlier in the season, Chalky had come to Nucky and asked him to let him open a nightclub on the boardwalk where Babette's was. All you gotta do is say yes. There's a line and you know that. That line can move. I just told you how it is. So now he's gotta go up to Chalky, who may or may not be disposed to help him. You safe here? 
Eli returns from Chicago with Al Capone, whom he had gone to to enlist help. Capone shows up with an army of guys. They all decide that they're going to fight this war together. I need a bed, some chow, and then you and me shut down. We talk about who dies. It's 15 grand. Let this one go. Luciano and Lasky have been getting deeper and deeper into the heroin business. One of the people Luciano wants to sell to, though, unfortunately turns out to be an undercover cop. This was the single event that started the disconnect between Luciano and Aldo Rothstein. What's that doing here? I had it delivered. You shut me up. Child. I worked for that! At this point, Jip has taken over the Artemis Club. Jillian starts this slow seduction process. Of course, her real plan is to kill him and get him out of the way. <laughs> oh, Red. Here, I just thought we were having some fun. Are you at Overholt? Don't you know what you got here? Nucky sent Mickey Doyle down to the Overholt Distillery to check it out. It's the biggest distillery in the country, and if they were to take it over, they would easily be the biggest bootleggers in the country. Nucky realizes he has a real opportunity to use this for bait. I'm calling with an offer. Your distillery, for a percentage, I can arrange for Joe Masseria to back away. How much of a percentage? 99. Nucky agrees and gives Rothstein control of the distillery. Rothstein then goes to Mazaria, makes his offer for the heroin in exchange for Mazaria pulling all of his men out of Atlantic City and leaving Jip to swing in the wind. Maybe one of the most stunning sequences we've done on the show, uh, Richard Harrow just completely decimates the Artemis Club. Close your eyes. Harrow brings Tommy to Julia and Paul Sigorsky's house, leaving him in the custody of, of Julia and her father. In his shame and embarrassment at having gone back to that way of life, doesn't come in, just leaves the boy there and walks off into the night alone. Chalky and Al Capone are laying in wait for Mazaria's men on the road out of Atlantic City. Now, Nucky and Eli can go and stalk their prey. They show up at the Artemis Club, but of course, Harrow's already been there. Who did this? They hear a noise off camera, which we know to be Tonino, Jip's man who did not escape. It's clear that Nucky, Eli, and Tonino have made a deal. Take him back to Masseria. Let him know this could be the end of the problems between us. Nucky makes a phone call to his people in Washington tells Gaston means that he would like him to arrest the man who's running the Overholt Distillery, and that man is Arnold Rothstein. Having vanquished Jip Rossetti and his other enemies, Nucky seeks out Margaret, who has gone back to Brooklyn and is living in a tenement, offers her money. She turns him down flat, finally realizing that she needs to stop this cycle. Nucky is very much alone at the end of season three. He's got his core group of people, certainly Eli, Chalky, uh, Mickey Doyle. These are the people in his inner circle who he feels he can trust, but he's got a world of enemies. Certainly Arnold Rothstein is one, to a larger extent, uh, Joe Mazzaria. The world has just gotten to be a much, much darker, dangerous place. Your friend is facing a difficulty. Just say how much and let's end it. You see why I wish to deal with you? I don't think I do. Season four picks up eight months later in February 1924. Nucky's world has gotten increasingly violent. Chalky's got his club on the boardwalk, which opens a world of possibilities for Nucky, but also a world full of new enemies. What shall we do, Mr. Thompson? What shall we do? 